picking a Lean Six Sigma belt provider, recommendations for your research. We will begin in a few minutes. In a moment, we will begin the webinar, but right now I would like to welcome you all and thank you for taking the time to join us. I will first address some logistical issues for the session and then introduce our speaker, Rick Haynes. A lot of material is planned for this one-hour webinar, so the audio will be muted for the remainder of the presentation to ensure that we are able to get through the entire presentation in the time allowed. We will not be able to hear you, but we, you will be able to hear Rick Haynes. But do not let this stop you from sending us a text question through the system during the presentation. We value your questions. If Rick cannot answer your question either during the presentation or at the end of the webinar, we will either email you or call you with a response. There will also be a recording of the webinar available on our website within 48 hours and you will receive an email with a link to the recording. Please know that as a participant in this webinar, someone with Smarter Solutions will be giving you a call, but if you do not want us to contact you, please let us know in the feedback survey at the end of the webinar. A few more seconds here. We've got some folks joining us still. And I will now introduce our speaker, Rick Haynes. Rick has over 20 years of Lean and Six Sigma experience as a practitioner, and he is one of Smarter Solutions' senior instructors. Through his career, he has certified as a master black belt, black belt, a champion, a yellow black belt, yellow belt, and along with teaching and certifying professionals in all the Lean Six Sigma areas. His personal Lean Six Sigma work has spanned nearly all business types, including manufacturing, transactional, and research and development. He has worked in all levels of the business, from entry level up to a site engineering manager. His life experiences and skills will provide you with an engaging discussion today. Again, thank you for joining us. And at this time, I've got Rick here in Austin with me, and I will turn the presentation over to him. Thank you, Alon. Here we're going to get to talk about Lean and Lean Six Sigma, Lean Green and Black Belt training. Boy, I'm stumbling over the words and I'm just starting. Uh, thank you all for joining. As Alon said, uh, please type in questions on the little GoToMeeting interface. Uh, we, I will answer them as we go along. Uh, it, it helps us, and just like we would if we were in class, we'd like our questions answered as they come up rather than waiting until the end. It, make the whole thing go better. So we're going to talk about today is another, this is a marketing type webinar trying to sell you on taking Lean and Six Sigma training for a green belt or black belt. Now of course I'm going to want you to take it through us, but really any, there's like, if you find a good course out there they will all help you in your career goals. But I'm going to still try to get you here because we have a really good course. So we're going to talk about what certification means, what you might see in a course, and we'll talk about prices at the end with Smarter Solutions. There we go. Where did it come from? Lean and Six Sigma came from other places. Motorola was really seen as the start of the Six Sigma world with Toyota was the seed for the Lean processes, although Lean was the Americanized view of it. Six Sigma came a little bit first in the 80s, uh, at least to the United States where it was created with Motorola and, and really a goal to have a method to improve their business quality without using inspection. Because they were doing mass production, it was to a point you couldn't inspect the quality into your product. So it gave them really a measure of quality without inspection, which would then lead to the ability to do improvements in their processes that you couldn't necessarily measure in a pass-fail quality test. They use Sigma level and DPMOs, which a lot of people don't use too much anymore, but it's moved all over to probably percent non-conforming as a good measure for quality now in the service industry and in manufacturing. There was a lot of people who trained in tool knowledge. Practitioners applied it at work. Uh, General Electric joined the Six Sigma bandwagon in the 90s, which is when it really became close to what it is today. Uh, 
And after the people from GE left, you have most of the people that are out teaching it today came out of that world. But it's really focused on repetitive processes to improve their performance. Lean came, I think the book, The Machine That Changed the World, came out in 1990. Uh, it documented what Toyota was doing on their automotive processes and tried to Americanize it and bring it to the United States to help with business flow. It was seen as a manufacturing tool just like Six Sigma. Now, both of these have changed to be probably more used in non-manufacturing than in manufacturing in the current time because the analogies between the two are wonderful. A manufacturing analogy will work in a service industry. A service industry analogy works well in manufacturing. I think because you look at the problem differently, you come up with better answers sometimes. But the lean stuff also gave us Kaizen, which you may or may not have heard of, a rapid improvement event. Well, lean was seen as the tool to use to improve efficiency, effectiveness, and just reducing cost. Although those of us that have learned all of them, either system really can work on quality or efficiency or cost. The best thing is to join the two together, which is where we are today. Now, one thing Lean and Six Sigma brought to the world is a call the DMAIC or DMAIC improvement mode. I, I think everybody really uses it out there that teaches Lean and Six Sigma. And I got them defined here. Define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. But if you've been around a while and if you could see me through your screen, you'd see I'm an older guy. I've been in this business before Lean and Six Sigma came out. But these, the improvement cycle they talk here is not that much different from the Deming and the Schuhart Plan, Do, Check Act or Plan, Do, Study Act. But it's very similar to the ones that the IT world uses and every other scientific method for improvement, which is why this method is longstanding probably lasted longer than most of the other improvement methodologies out there. But there, of course, there's differences in the training that you can get in Lean and Six Sigma as there are with all methods. But the top programs, I've got a couple in right here, do not teach Lean and Six Sigma as standalone processes. And surprisingly, you still see them out there. They also do not teach you to lean the process out and then Six Sigma it which I think there's one whole consultancy that act, that teaches that. Businesses that are, I've worked with a couple that adopted that philosophy, and they really never got anywhere. They do a bunch of lean improvements and never move beyond, and they never realize the full benefits of these tools. But a good program should teach you a good blend of traditional lean and Six Sigma along with a modern, a more modern set of tools and ideas to help you improve. because. It's not just the tools, but it's the whole system and the thought process that this DMAIC gives you that provides a consistent and repeatable improvement method. But the best ones will teach Lean and Six Sigma in an integrated system as we would. But they also should teach you tools that you can improve every type of process. And I, I think Forrest, who runs the company, we talk often about the concept, should you have special flavors of Lean Six Sigma? Should there be Lean Six Sigma for service, Lean Six Sigma for manufacturing, for finance, for healthcare? And it's interesting if you sit back and look at them, when you see those sold, what they're really doing is replacing the examples with ones from a single genre of business. Like there'll be only healthcare examples. And I think it many of the providers use this as a way to shorten the class by saying, well, you know, we don't really use that tool in the service industry, so we will leave it out of the course. Now, at Smarter Solutions, we really don't like that thought because there is a body of knowledge of what everybody should learn in Lean and Six Sigma. The best one out there is probably by the American Society of Quality, but there's a number of other ones. And what they show is that to be a good black belt or green belt, you should have a full breadth of skills. Everybody will not stay in the same job, or they may not do improvements only in the same area. So you really should learn a general set of tools, not one specific to an industry. Because like I said earlier, manufacturing analogies work well for the service industry and back and forth. So it's good to choose one that covers all genres. Now, I, a good instructor, as ours would be, and ones you can see in other good consulting firms, will adjust the discussions in the class to fit the students that are there, which is always beneficial. 
But every business has an HR department. Every business hires employees. Every business manufactures something, even if it's paperwork or a response to a question. So really, business exists. They're weighted differently. Um, what's typical to get training? In, in the past years, most of the people trained in Lean Six Sigma came out of businesses. There really wasn't a lot of consultants doing it. What they found is the business would listen to the generic body of knowledge. Then they would teach what their senior folks think their business needs. They'd have somebody internal to the business teach the class. There would be a lot of coaching and helping of the students. Most in this case, a black belt would be assigned to be a full-time improvement person for a year or two. Green belts would be part-time improvement people. They'd do it with their job. But at this point, there was no central authority for certification or even what you were supposed to be taught. Many of these programs, the companies, every cycle that they'd review it, they would reduce the amount of material in the course because the leadership would say they're in class too long or the students would get tired of it. So every iteration, they'd remove stuff out of the class until the end they had something that went really smooth and easy, but students wouldn't be fully prepared either. Now, many of the people that are out training today came out of these business-oriented Six Sigma programs that were put together either by plagiarizing a book or somebody else's material and then taught whatever they felt like. Now, since that point, and what's hard for us here at Smart Solutions is really anybody can teach Lean Six Sigma. You, you chose this webinar assuming you don't have all training, there's no reason you can't open a website and say you're a Lean Six Sigma trainer, buy a book on it, and start a course, and even certify people. Because there really is not an overriding rule on how you can do it. So there's no standards. We've seen even here in Austin, Texas, where we are, a two-week black belt course that didn't require you to run a project to demonstrate you could use it. It was done with simulations. I actually can't believe you can teach black belt knowledge in two five-day sessions. That's what we use for green belt training. And green belts really, it's on the edge of being able to do it in two weeks. Our black belt courses take four full, four full weeks if you're taking it in the classroom. There are some now that have online classes that you never interact with a person, and you're certified when you've completed the online lessons. We've seen them up to 80 to 90 hours of class, down to even 40 hours of online training to get your black belt training. It, it just doesn't seem right. In these cases, my expectation is that the training groups or training companies just in it for the money. They want to get you through, get your money, and move on to the next person. But they really aren't invested in the student being successful. I think that is a real advantage of the consultancies out there. If you work with Smarter Solutions, we're going to be there for years helping you figure stuff out, look at the next problem, teach you a tool that may not have been in the class. But we like our students, and we help them for years. But it is true, as I have at the bottom there, Six Sigma is becoming a commodity. And it is just anybody who picks up a book is really allowed to teach. Um, it does make it hard to even say that I do that, teach Lean Six Sigma, because of the competition out there. Because really, as I have here, everybody seems to teach it. Most universities, community colleges. There's groups like Smarter Solutions that are consultancies that teach Lean Six Sigma is a specific topic, and it's smart solutions. It's about a third of our business is doing that. We also do consulting and business process management. Then there's general consultants. You can find the Accentures and the McKinsey's generally have the ability to teach it along with their general, with their basic business consulting. There's websites out there that you don't even know who they are, but they'll be glad to give you a course and do it online. Uh, there's even an HR firm in Austin that teaches Greenbelt training. The one-week course, they don't say anything about what they cover, but they'd be glad to give it to their people. And we're finding also a lot of the IT firms are starting to add it. There's been a big push lately about Lean Six Sigma to support your enterprise architecture and your business process management. But really, the IT people are walking out and working on processes. They're seeing the need to actually bring in some improved methodologies. But there's a lot of them out there. Uh, I didn't even list picking up a book and learning it. And the American Society of Quality, 
ASQ, you can actually just go take an exam and be certified if you pass all the rules. Lots of ways to go do it. And of course, they are not all equal. Now, I've been through a lot of interesting stuff. If you do have questions, I'll remind you again. Please type them in. Glad to hear them. Um, so that's about where you can get training. Now, most training, if I look at the instructor-led side, are a bunch of slides. Everybody uses PowerPoint now. Uh, some have no clear textbook to follow. Is well, I think the last two companies I taught with, the instructor could pick the textbooks that went with the class, and you could deal with your students. So we'd pick a couple of books, give it to them, and then teach the slides we were taught. Many of them have moved away from statistics to make it more easy because they wanted good student reviews. And some of the students didn't like to learn how to do a t-test or actually test that their changes were adequate. I taught with one in San Antonio that was that way. They uh, wanted a course taught, called it a green belt, took out all of the math completely out of it, made it look almost like a quality circle or a total quality management project when they're done, but they called it Six Sigma. Many use Excel uh, to collect data and to do simple analysis with. Some actually, their whole course is built around a software set that they created that is non-standard, but that's the way they chose to do it. Um, there's not really a continuing education program out there. For the most part, you sit in the seat, get the course done, and you get a certificate. Um, I admit that makes me sad that you can get through all of this without a very good program, but it is possible. This leads us to our first question. I talked about a lot of things, but which of these five, and you can select all of them to one of them or none of them, are important to you if you were to go pick at Lean Six, Lean Six Sigma Training Source? Coverage of the full body of knowledge, a good textbook that's aligned to the course, one instructor through the whole course, and I guess that one surprised me. A lot of places, you get a different instructor every time they hold class, and it's hard to get a relationship with them. Of course, specific to your industry, or that there's a lot of coaching and mentoring. Now, so I appreciate it. I can see you guys are doing it. We're going to go about five more seconds here, and Alon's going to post the poll for everybody to read. Right now, it looks like... Um, they're all doing quite well. Looks like they're all quite important. It also looks like I only gave four choices when I put this in instead of a fifth one. So I'm trying to think which one I left off. Oh, well, you don't get one of my choices. If you look at the poll, the most important one were the coaching after the course and the coverage of full body of knowledge. Well, that's wonderful. It makes me feel good because that means that we're a uh, good choice for you. Because there are a lot, one of the most popular ones in the United States right now is done as distance learning, so you watch it with your PC or Mac. Uh, you watch it live or recorded, and you can email back and forth with somebody, and they, you're not sure who will be answering your questions. I guess with that, that's interesting. Can you put it back to me now? My screen looks different. It went back on the slide, so I'm going to go back to where I was. Don't know why it did that. Uh, what's interesting, well, you may not realize, or you may, but as I've seen, Lean Six Sigma is really more of a business course than it is a math course, which means you do need interaction with an instructor or someone to talk to and understand the relationships, because most of our business improvement work is changing people's performance. So what should you expect at the end of the training? Now, you may have different expectations. These are the ones we put up here. You should be able to identify business issues. You should be able to overview a process and see if it's effective, efficient, or working well. And I mean beyond just having errors, just that it could be done better. You should, at the end of any either of a green belt or black belt course, be able to lead a team to solve a problem. I'm not talking 25 or 50 people on team, but generally they run three to six people. You should be able to lead the implementation of the improvement. In other words, you should be able to drive a change through an organization. The tougher one there is you should be able to judge the benefits of your change. If you have made a change, you can't go back to your business and say, hey, I worked on this. It's better as seen by less labor, quicker, less cost, or something. No one may believe that you actually made a change. 
And probably my favorite one of all of them, and I see from all of our students, is you do your regular job better. These tools are not just limited to Lean and Six Sigma. We did a webinar a couple years ago about all the things that you could do in business with your Lean Six Sigma tools that are not Lean and Six Sigma. There's a lot out there. But what I want to get to is Lean Six Sigma is not all about doing an improvement project. Now, we do focus on it because that's one of the uh, ways we judge that you can apply the concepts from class is to oversee an improvement project that you manage. At the end of that, we grant certification. But now you've been to class, you've done examples, but you've also demonstrated the ability to use it outside of class, which is wonderful. So what are some of the differences between companies, or the belts in different companies? Some are full-time improvement leaders. Other organizations identify problems to be solved and only let them work on the big ones. So they're not full-time. Sometimes there's part-time improvement leaders in a business unit. So you might have a corporate group like the first line item was, but there also might be one in HR, one in operations, one in finance. These are part-time people that just work within their unit, and they just use the tools or such that are specific to that job or that department. There's a people that write you should have one group for the whole company that floats around, but there's a real case that there's worth keeping some people assigned to jobs too. Now, and also, there's managers and coaches within the organization that generally are the leaders within data and analysis effort. There's a lot of different ways to do it. And of course, some methods may be more successful than others or maybe become self-sustaining quicker. But really, even if you're a part-timer, you did this on your own in your business, there are benefits you can bring your company. What are some other assignments green belts and black belts get? Because I. I talk to a lot of people in this realm, and I've been in it for a number of years. Why do people take it? Some people, they like to be a black belt, but they get tired of it as a full-timer, and they transfer back to their own job. But yeah, they're coming back to be a better employee. Many black and green belts are promoted soon after training to a leadership position. Because you'll find once you get these skills to solve problems, you can be a great supervisor manager because now, you know how to guide people to get to the right answer. It's like a big team. Well, and oddly enough, some people take this to change their job. Within the current economic environment in the United States, and I assume other places, jobs get tough, but these skills in green belt and black belt and master black belt, which we're not really talking about here, are transferable across industries very easy, whereas your job history on your resume may not be. We had people working in cell phone design. The whole effort was going away. The business was closing that facility. Those that had the Lean and Six Sigma training were able to jump over to different industries very easily. Uh, I'd say a lot of our students are in our classes these days looking to do that, move outside of a stagnant industry in a new one. And a few of them, which I think I count me in, they just love this work and they're going to stick with it until they become a master black belt. I know one of the guys I teach with who works for Smarter Solutions, he took a green belt class with, I think it was Honeywell, and within the first week of the class, he went up to his master black belt instructor and said, I'm going to, have, I'm going to be a master black belt someday. And the guy laughed at it, which is sort of nuts. Because if you think about it, there's a person that has found a topic that is so well fitting with what they love to do, how could you not want to nurture that person to make it? But I do find a handful, even in green belt and black belt classes, that realize when they learn these tools, they make sense of something they knew they were quite good at. And they love it. I mean, I, it's been a happy job for me for many, many years. But there are some people, that's your job, you just want to go do it. Sounds good, doesn't it? How could you not want those things? Better jobs, get excited, move into leadership positions. The tough part is it's not as easy as taking a class to get all that. Just because you took a class and got a certificate, because I talked earlier about the full range of what people teach, anybody who's really looking for these skills does understand where certifications come from, and they do know about the companies that teach. So you want to get a certification authority or train authority that's respected around the country. Uh, we are one of them. I think Forrest has been doing this for 22 years. He's got a well-renowned and recognized performance in our materials for over 20 years. 
So it's good to have it. Even I, who has had a good master black belt training, had to send in my paperwork to get a job here. It, luckily, it turned out one of the guys who signed my black belt certificate was on the board of directors here. So I guess if he was going to sign it, they had to be good enough. It, it made me laugh a little bit. But not everyone gets these benefits. You really have to be successful enough to move up. The quality and the breadth of your training de depends on how much you can really move ahead. If you've got a very poor Lean Six Sigma course, like say a two-week black belt without a project, you may not get enough to move ahead. And if you also did not get a lot of support during and after your course, it may be difficult for you to apply it, which is really what they're looking for to get ahead. Excuse me, when should you take a course? Well, I would say right now. I guess not now this minute, but really soon, as soon as you can arrange to do it within the range of your work. Because it really is that good. Um, go take it. These tools, Lean Six Sigma, useful right away. Out of a class of about 10 or 15, we generally, ever, after every week when they come back for the next week, I hear stories of how they fixed things and figured things out that weren't part of their project because they had gained a new set of eyes to look at processes, to get a process view. The, the tools and analysis, they now can look at data and, and recognize what's going on. But that happens to all of them in a good course, of course. Now, so why wait? Well, in some way, there's time constraints, there's monetary constraints. But go find a course, and like ours, we exceed the, the body of knowledge as set by ASQ, and we go beyond it in soft skills and some hard skills. What you get here is an instructor that's been through the ropes. They've done all this stuff. They know what works and doesn't work. But they get you ready to either work as part of a Six Sigma program or even all by yourself in your business. This can prepare you for, again, doing projects or just analysis. Uh, I, I remember I tell, if you were in my class and I was teaching, I tell you, to stay up on a lot of the tools in class, if you see somebody present some numbers up on the screen, and you see all they did is like a red, yellow, green chart or a bar chart, well, you'll know a lot more after these classes. Ask them for the data and do some analysis for them. Share with them what you find. You can build a good network of people that trust you. We also cover a lot of soft skills, and all good programs should, about how to lead, how to team, how to give presentations, because that's I mean, having a great idea by yourself doesn't solve anything unless you can communicate and work with your work group to do that. There's also a business side of Lean and Six Sigma. I mean, the goal is not to run a project. The goal is to make the business ed. So we would focus in our courses an awful lot of the business integration of Lean and Six Sigma. Even if your group doesn't have it, it would be how you can do your work and make sure you're more linked to the strategic needs of the business. Uh, and I think the funnest one of I've liked of this job is the last bullet. How do you understand things that you're not an expert in? When they send you out to go work on something that you've never seen before, these green and black belt skills allow you to go figure out the process, understand it, make improvements, and learn something new. Now, our courses do use statistics, and really all of the good ones should. Because if you're going to do these, you have to have proof or evidence to show that acting upon our suggestions will change performance. Someone said they just asked if we have classes in Spanish. Now, we do have a green belt class that we teach periodically. Uh, we have an instructor who's in South America. I forgot his country right now. That has uh, translated our course. Uh, we've given it, I don't know if we've given it in the United States, but we've given it south of the US border at times in green belt. Uh, the black belt course we have not translated. Uh, I, we haven't had a big draw for it, I think. It, we've taught it in non-English speaking countries and the master black belt course, I guess because most of the people at the business level at some level had to speak English to get by. Yeah, that's right, Rick. Our class is actually in Chile. Chile. Thank you, Alon. I knew it was down there. Uh, we have a partnership down there with a company that teaches uh, in native Spanish. I think they also taught it in Bolivia, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but we go around and teach it. But I guess that's all I have on Spanish and foreign language right now. All right. Thanks for the question. You bet. 
Uh, our courses also involve integrated textbooks. One of the advantages Smarter Solutions has, and I think there's one other provider that has it, is they have a textbook that goes along with their course. So that if you, I mean, I, I guess I teach in Master Black Belt about learning styles and teaching. Some people learn better by hearing. Some people do it better by seeing. Now, if they're a, if they're a hearing person, they're going to like instructor-led classes. They're not going to read that much. They're going to listen and watch the instructor. But there's those of us that read. They're going to read the slides. And if they don't get it, they're going to want some another reading reference. And that's why we provide a textbook that's thoroughly aligned with our course. And if you didn't get it, and that night or in a week, you can crack open a textbook and it's taught the same way. Um, I like it also, too, because most of my early classes, the only reference you had to DMAIC was your printed course slides, which are very difficult to look up in a year and find them. Well, a textbook that's got an index is wonderful. We also provide you what we call our project execution workbook. It's a spiral bound lay on your desk, flip through to help you run the project with checklists and guidance and little helping notes to help you get through a project. And we also have what we call our project roadmap. It's a, well, if I was to get, I see, it's 128 inches, 10 feet, about nine meet, no, I make about three meters long and about a meter tall, or a yard tall, that shows the entire sequence of running a Lean Six Sigma project with a flow chart that's got drill downs. But for those real visual learners, it's nice to follow this chart that shows you where you're going. So those are the kind of stuff a real good course would give you. Time for our next question. I answered some of it for me, but I'd like to see what you guys are. Pick from your reasons why you would take a Six Sigma course. Is it for personal growth, to change my career, because your job requires it, um, or just because it's interesting? So the polls are up there. Please start checking on it. Looks like we set this up so you just got to pick your most the one that fits you the best rather than all of the reasons. But there are, these are all good reasons. Um, the fourth one, which I see people go through, is they've been doing improvement for years, but they're not recognized for it, so they're taking the class to formalize it, get a certification, to lead them to the next step. So if we get about five seconds here, Lon will close the poll, and we will uh, all get to see it. How are we going there? It looks like. Well, you can obviously pick more than one choice right now since they add up to more than 100. But the big ones are for personal growth and the job requires it. Uh, the personal growth one's wonderful. That can just help you at your current job. But nobody's doing it to change careers. Now, that, we generally have a good portion of people in our classes. They're doing it to change their job, to move to something else. But the other one's about half you said to get recognition of what you do, and a few was just because it's interesting. Now, I have seen people, and you, would, you may think that's really ridiculous that someone will spend weeks in class to learn something just because it's interesting. And there are some. They're really happy with their job, but they just want to learn something. Uh, I will tell you, even though to change my career isn't one that came up well, if you'd please go back to the slide now a lot, that is a really good reason to do it. It's also a backup plan if you want to change careers or move or do something like that. All right. Right now, it's not showing it's not my slide. Time. But while you figure that out, we do have a question that came in. And uh, this attendee is wanting to know, does our course address culture change? Uh, and I think that might be the soft skills you were talking about. Uh, let me further elaborate. In government, data uh, can be limited. To gain buy-in improvements, they need to be visible with minimal effort. Will the training assist improving business with limited data and, move, and help you move towards more improvement based on collected data? Well, that's, a, that's a lot of questions at once. I feel <laughs> like this is a press conference. Um, let's start to see if, Elon, if I don't catch all of them, which you just remind me. But about limited okay. data, I had a student a couple years back that did a significant improvement to their business with only three data points because they were trying to speed up a process that had only been done three times in the last 10 years, but they needed it a whole bunch. So yes, you can do it with very limited data. I, I guess you can't do it without data, because then you'd never really know if you made a change. 
there's always some. Uh, we teach you how to collect data, and the hard part is to we, you start out with defining the problem. The business may know that there, there is a problem without any data, so part of your project may be to collect data to confirm it and to make the change. Now, I'm wondering if you're, the poll's still showing there. Uh, can you close that and go back to, I don't know. I don't know if you, if you guys could text in one thing, if you can see my question two still being up on the screen. Um, it says I'm showing it here. Oh, we're good. Okay, there we go. Thanks. Right, Let's get back to the other one about the government. Uh, Lean Six Sigma, is a lot of it's about saving money, but I've worked in the government, in the Department of Energy in the, in the United States. When it isn't about money, it's about efficiencies and other things. So you don't need it to, you can work easily in a government environment for doing this. What did I forget a lot? And what about gaining buy-in for the improvement? Well, that's an interesting one because you would imagine that if you can ever show that your business made a significant improvement, that it should take no effort at all to have the company buy in to making the change. And part of the reasons we have statistics in these courses is so you can show with a high level of confidence that this change will benefit the company. But there are times that you get a leadership that is not liking to change. So what you would do is we teach you to do a pilot test or do a small scale one so they can actually realize the benefits. Because once they see them in their hands, it's hard to say no. And I guess the other one in there was soft skills. Uh, one of the big differences between a black and a green belt is the addition of more soft skill training. With us, a green belt is expected to be trained to make improvements in the area they're probably already an expert and well known. The black belt train, one of the big additions to it is we try to train a black belt to be able to walk into any situation and be successful at leading an improvement team. So we spend a bit more time in the black belt about soft skills of how to interact with people, how to manage change better, um, how to collect data in a non-threatening manner. There's a little bit more of that in the black belt course. I think I covered all the pieces. Yeah, I think so, Rick. Thank you. All right. We did have another question. Oh, before go you ahead. Move, before you move on, um, somebody interested in the course wants to know, should they get a statistic course before applying to Smarter Solutions Black or Green Belt? Oh, I haven't even asked that. What are the prerequisites for taking a class? The prerequisites really for any Lean Six Sigma class at a Black or a Green Belt level should be that you can use a laptop. You should be able to use Microsoft Office or something close to it. Uh, and you, I, I say, or I guess our corporate decisions, you should have an analytical thought. As for math or statistics, we'd probably rather that you do not go learn, take a stat class. But you should be able to do basic algebra, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. And if you can take a logarithm and a square root, that's probably the total end of all the math you've got to do. Our courses are all taught using Minitab so that we don't have to teach you to be a statistician. You can work through this real rapidly, even if you're not a man, if you don't like math. Of finding the right menu, putting the data in the right format, and the software is very good at telling you when you make a mistake. It tells you what it is, but it gives you an answer in a business lingo so you can act on it. So no, you probably shouldn't go out and take it. If we do find that about the only thing we that people really benefit from coming to a Lean Six Sigma course that we offer, if you ask, is a quick introduction to Minitab so you're not afraid of it when you show up to class. And we have get, uh, I don't know what the number is a lot, but probably one in 20 or 25 would like the textbook early so they can look through it. Sure. And people that are real readers like to get the books early. Great. Yeah. And the other part of their question was, if so, uh, where do they access this? And so you mentioned maybe a mini tab intro. Where can they get a mini tab intro? Well, we offer a little free online introduction to mini tab that, uh, that I guess you don't have to sign up for the class to get it. it. It's on our training site. But we offer a couple online solutions to go do that. Uh, but also the mini tab software has got really nice tutorials built into it to teach you how to use it too. Um, and as the world says, on YouTube, there's an awful lot of stuff that Minitab put up there about using their software. 
But those are the big ones, the, the books and a little getting used to Minitab. The hardest part for most people with Minitab is it looks like a spreadsheet, such as Excel, but it's not. It really does, so the tables of numbers don't act or react like they would as a spreadsheet, but it's still a menu-driven analysis. Okay. Great. Thanks, Thanks Brent. Uh, talking about our books. So I said you can get them early if you ask. We, these are the four basic books we give out to our students. The volume two book, which is a third one, is one that's about the business side of Lean Six Sigma. We do not share that one with green belts because we don't get much into the business aspects. It's more just about the improvement for green belts. We also, and this shows our spiral bound project execution guide in the upper right, which is the, it lays flat, it's got examples of the roadmap and an explanation of the basic tools. It's got examples of the analysis, what a table would look like or a brainstorming might look like. We also have two PDFs, and you can see them. I know they're unreadable, but they cover the whole DMAIC roadmap so that you can follow it if you like a big picture. And we give those as a PDF free to our students. So you can print it off and put it around your wall if you want. But again, it's about three meters long or 120 inches. Maybe it's 96 inches, but it's long. <laughs> it is. I got it on my wall and it's long. Plus the materials. All programs should give you a copy of your slides. Uh, so we provide you a binder of each week, for each week of class. It's got every single thing that's shown in class. Generally a little bit extra too if you have side reading. Or we actually put in training topics that some classes ask for, but not all of them. Uh, also, we spend a lot of time that if, with the Minitab that you can click through it and teach it to yourself later. We do use Minitab. There are other options out there. JMP, a SAS project, or JUMP is used by some. But really, after Minitab, the next thing are add-ins to Excel, which can do most of the same math, but they're not as trouble-free. They're more difficult to use. And if you make a mistake, they, don't, they give you a type of advice that Microsoft gives on all of their products, which is you get an error code and a number and no help. So that is part of it. And we have homework most every night. So we give you the answers so you can check yourself. It's like a regular course. So what about teaching of our black and our green belt classes? We teach in a very um, traditional manner in the fact that you get a very experienced practitioner, not an academic, I guess. People like me or my peers that have been doing this for years really answer questions. We cover all the key topics in different methods. You watch it being done. You understand the theory through a discussion or a display. Then as the group will address it, try the tool, whether it's a group discussion, uh, acting it out, or actually doing the math on uh, your mini tab. Then you generally do it by yourself. So it's got a group event and an individual event. Then we try to do an experiential thing. And we use the catapult a lot to toss balls and measure distances to show how a lot of these tools work out. So now you've seen it, you've played with it as a group, done individual, and also seen it in an exercise. We also ask you to then do a homework outside of class that evening or between classes to make sure you do it on your own. And then with class, we then take all of that and generalize it to how it works in different areas of business. So again, it does take a little extra time, but no one walks away not learning it. Now, we do give after-class support. And I think our label says three to five hours of one-on-one -on -one support with a, one of our master black belts. And it's generally your instructor, unless you have a topic that really fits to one of our specialists. Uh, we suggest that. But they support you through your project. They provide additional instruction if it's needed. Plus, they generally will do your review for certification. And then Smarter Solutions, you've got to finish the class and complete a project within the guidelines that are using the method that we taught in class. And if you did it right, you get certified. Now, we tell you about a year after the end of class. Most people get done quicker, but we have some that take two years to do it. And we'll work with you on all of that. So yeah, that's a... That's probably standard. I'd say if you're looking at a training company that doesn't require a project to be completed, you're probably not getting a good training class because they maybe not have taken the requirement away because you may not be able to do it. 
Which leads us to the third question. Do we have a question? Sure. And yeah, before we move on to I'm the I'm going to go back so you don't study up on that question. <laughs> no studying on the question. All right. Um, we do have a question. Somebody's asking for a recommendation. Uh, he is a Six Sigma black belt. Uh, okay. He's been a black belt for nine years, um, certified by ASQ for different reasons. But anyway, he said he's not going there. Um, he's been playing other roles for a while. And recently, he's been asked to lead the development or an internal capability or an organizational excellence highlighted by Lean Six Sigma. And so he wants to know if you have any recommendations about taking this challenge regarding training. Oh, and honestly, to whoever asked, what you're speaking of is what's generally seen as a master black belt role. If you're looking for training, that would be taking a master black belt class. We do teach a very good one that almost half of the class is about how to put together a program and lead it. Uh, of the books, I'm going to go back a couple slides here to these books. The volume two book, which you can get from us on our website or on Amazon.com, called Business Deployment, is really a how-to book of putting together an organization that will lead the improvement or operational excellence within a business. What you'll find in there it's not really about Six Sigma at that point. What it's really about is business success. And I think that's the big change and one of the reasons Lean Six Sigma has struggled in some companies. It's not about the improvement. What you'll, be, what you'll see in that book or if you took our Master Black Book class is how to put together a program that integrates the, the, data, the data at the business level, how your executives look at change, how to align with the strategic plan, how to pick good projects that always move the performance needle. And I think that's, if, if that's where you are, you've been a black belt for a while, and they're putting you in a leadership of the improvement effort, that tells me go get a master black belt class um, that, that focuses on the business of Lean Six Sigma, not just the projects. And if you can't, buy that book of Forrest, the volume two book, and I think you'll see a step one step-by-step -step method to make it work. Hope that was good. Let's go to our question yeah, now. Thank you. Like, right. I think textbooks are important, but it's always interesting how my audience feels. So we got a poll here. How important do you think is the reference books or textbooks included in a Lean Six Sigma course? So I got that they don't really matter, so it's okay to have them have a few references made, but it's different from the teachings. Clear up, too, that it's integrated into the course, that the same symbols and language are in the textbook as you've got in the course. All right, so you get to just pick one. Where do you think is the best alignment for a textbook to your course? Now, um, we've got, it looks like the top two are doing well. If you give me about 10 more seconds here, please click on something. Um, but I'm liking my audience right now. I'll tell you that, Lon. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to close You're the poll here. With you. <laughs> um, I'll share that. You should see that the big winner was the last one. It integrated with the course. Some of you like routine references, and some like the references but similar to the course. And I, I, I know that the top two are important to me because I am a reader. I want to be able, if I didn't get what the instructor said or if I drifted off for a minute want to catch up, I'd like to be able to read it to see it. And I did struggle with my last company about the, the textbooks didn't match it. They teach how to do a t-test differently than you had your class. It didn't matter. So it's one thing I've really enjoyed working here at Smarter Solutions is to have a real textbook that is, uses the same terms, lingo, and order that you have in class. But thank you for that. I know that Forrest will appreciate that answer, as I'll share it to him after the webinar. So if we right, close that and that. move back, why is it not showing up again? <laughs> For some reason, it keeps telling me I'm back again. Or is it back okay. yet? You're back to the poll, and so I'm sure the next screen will be your, your slides. But uh, while we're pulling it's that up, um, we do have a question about the cost of the class. Oh, you are perfect. When you see the next slide, you'll know the answer to that. <laughs> well, they want to know about the materials in the book. Uh, and so we Hit will hide. get that up as soon as I don't as know why. There we go. Here we're we back. Go the speed of the internet. Prices, thank you for that question. But here are the prices for our classes right now. Uh, earlier this year, we uh, reduced the black belt. This is the classroom one. 
right now we're running the about ten thousand dollars for the black belt and about just forty five hundred for green belt class. Now that's four weeks of classroom training and all the coaching uh, and all the textbooks are the black belt and it's two weeks of training with all the textbooks and the coaching for the green belt. We have an early sign up discount. Uh, you can see there, it's ten percent off. Those are good until the start of the next class, which is late January, is this a month before the start of our next class. But there's also asterisks there for being special. As we put this together, I was told that we're making a very special pricing discount, the largest ever. I could say it's for the Black Friday here, but it really isn't. It's for month of November, and it's for quality month. I mean, there's not many days left, but you can see it if you get on our Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn for the Smarter Solutions business page. But what I've really been talking about was the classroom sessions, but we also offer a spectacularly good online course. Now, you'd say, Rick, how can you talk about a good online course after you said there's interaction and questions and textbooks and that they're important? I'll say, that's what our Greenbelt class, we created these courses for our clients that could not bring everybody to the classroom. So they have people in the classroom, but they've got a handful of people for one reason or another cannot travel and go to the site. This online, we call it blended online training, has the exact body of knowledge of the classroom, and we find the students have an identical proficiency at the end. It involves an awful lot of coaching, 12 to 15 hours per person, one-on-one. -on -one. It's got the same homework questions. It uses the same textbook. It follows everything. And it really eliminates one of the big problems with the online training model is when you're done, the training course goes away and you'll never see it again. So we spend a lot of time to make sure you'll have the textbook when you're done so you don't need to see the course again. But there, there, the prices we have with and without coaching, uh, if that's more your choice, we do find that everybody cannot learn well with online learning. But it is really wonderful for some people. So it's offered. So there's the price question. That's great. And Rick, um, yes. where are, are most of our classes offered? We do have one attendee who is offering to, to bring me to Costa Rica. <laughs> where are you? Um, uh, but he is interested in a course in Costa Rica. Boy, we've had a student go up to Master Black Belt from Costa Rica last year. We do get people flying from around the world for the courses. Our general open classes with one person or two people at a time uh, are here in Austin, Texas. It's a nice town. Weather's pretty good. We teach classes anywhere in the world that we're asked if you can get a class together. We've been teaching them in Toronto off and on because of a partnership up there. See, I think I've been teaching open classes also in Baltimore. We did one overseas. Uh, but most of the ones that we teach outside of Austin are focused on business sponsors it, and they're generally caught inside of a business. So if Costa Rica, we'd be down there really easy. We just need about six to eight people for a class, and we'll come down and teach it. Uh, just as long as I get to go. <laughs> um, with that, it can be taught in English. I said in the Greenbelt, we have a teacher that can teach it in Spanish also. Great. All right. Thanks for that. So what should you do? I mean, we had the person write in that was a nine-year black belt. Well, they've got a thing going. They're paying attention. One thing about this training, like many things we learn, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. So you've got to find a way to do continued education. And if you work with Smarter Solutions, I guess even if you were trained somewhere else, this stuff's all free. But we provide a lot of ongoing education opportunities, such as webinars as this. I think we're doing one coming up soon about BPMN, a new flow charting method will be coming up in December. Is that right, Milan? Right. Uh, so we have calendar. webinars like that to give you refreshers and on stuff. We have blogs on Lean Six Sigma topics, one on business topics for the person that was looking at a business system or looking for an organization. There's a specific topic blog about the business side of Lean Six Sigma. We've got a resource library that's got free ebooks, it's got articles, it's got old webinars to watch, there's a lot there to do. Uh, and I do have a blog, I think the second one's mine, uh, that I write questions that students have and topics that I think are of interest to Lean Six Sigma practitioners. But find a way to keep your knowledge, even if you're just thinking about a Lean Six Sigma 
course, go find a website or two or a LinkedIn group that you might be interested in paying attention. Find out the stuff they're dealing with. It's quite interesting. So that's really bringing us to the end, Alon. Okay. We've covered the Lean Six Sigma. We talked about training methods, trying to push you all to sign up at Smarter Solutions for Lean Six Sigma course, but also to keep your ongoing learning opportunities. If, if I didn't, I'm pretty sure I did, though, convey that I really think this topic is worthwhile to everybody, and I personally enjoy it. Um, about the only downside of taking Lean Six Sigma, now this is a bit of a joke, is everywhere you go, you start seeing inefficiencies. It makes you want to go to the grocery store and talk to the manager about how to better staff their people to reduce lines. And all of us that take these classes start doing it for a while. But that may be a, a nerd thing to do, but it really it shows what happens in these classes. You get a transformation of how you look at things. People gain a process view of everything. It's powerful. That's right. We got one of our uh, class students call back and tell us about shopping with their child and, and oh that was build a bear workshop that's right <laughs> that was a funny one I don't know if you have young kids that they they give you an empty shell of a bear and they have a machine that stuffs it and you buy clothes for it you get a birth certificate for your bear when they fill it but she was waiting with her granddaughter there and she called me from the place and goes I've turned into you that I'm sitting there waiting in line. They got two fill stations, a big line at just one of them, and four people at the counter talking. So I went and explained to them how they could double their throughput by using the other fill station. They looked at me funny. She said she just went back in line. I realized they weren't ready to hear it yet. <laughs> but that kind of stuff just happens. That's right. And this is the last chance. We're finished up. If you have uh, other questions, uh, please put them in now. All right. I don't have much have else. One oh, good. In. Rick, um, we, this person asked, uh, you mentioned simulation as a project. What is the downside of a simulation project? Well, there's a couple different ones. Um, I know one of our lower end competitors has a, a business process and a simulator, and you sort of work your Lean Six Sigma project by using it to collect data, you set a simulation setting and it does something and you try to optimize to come up with the right settings. Uh, we find that those are probably very good to help you lose the analytical tools, but what you miss is the human side of change and going how to collect data from people and how to write a data collection plan and how to make changes to it when you're just turning knobs on a computer. I don't think you get the same experience. Now, there are ways to run simulations as part of an improvement project that can be very powerful that you may build a simulator for your actual process and use that for an improvement. Now, I think those are wonderful projects. So it really, if you look at the taxonomy of learning, it's more difficult to demonstrate that you can use the concept out of class. And that's really why all of the good Lean Six Sigma programs require a project to be completed for certification. Now, most places that are outside consultants, such as Smarter Solutions, require one. Most businesses that have internal training or that we even do their training for them require two of them. One that's heavily coached and one they're on their own. But it's very difficult when we're an outsider and if you're just here by yourself at training, we only require one. Yeah, I'm glad you went down that route also, Rick. Uh, we do have another question. Um, is, does ASQ accept our certification? Now, if the ASQ doesn't accept or not accept anybody's certification, American Society of Quality started out as an organization that supported people in the quality field, but now it's since become a competitor to everybody that does their stuff. They provide an independent certification that anybody can take. We have students, because of the nature of their work, they will take our course when they complete our certification, go take the exam at ASQ and pass it. So now they've got both certifications. Because my experience, which is not perfect, but it says companies in the Asian uh, manufacturing sphere really appreciate an ASQ certification. But within Europe and the US, they treat it as just a certification. But no, ours is respected to be now, I'm going to say actually a little better. If you look at ASQ, they expect you to 
turn in affidavits that say you've run a project, so they don't really know it. You just tell them you have, and then you take a multiple choice exam for black and green belt. But in that nature of testing, there's things they are not able to evaluate. You don't, you can't use a computer, so you have a pad of paper, a pencil, and a calculator, and a textbook. It's open book. But there's things about change management. There's there's things that you when you like taking the topics to your work that they can never assess. So in some areas, the ASQ certification is seen as not as good as a certification that requires an actual project and course to take. It's like you can't use Minitab or any of the other options for statistics, so they really can't test your ability to do that either. Well, would there be a benefit to getting both certifications? There are in some industries. One of our bigger clients asks all of their students that go through our thing to go out and get an ASQ certification a year after completion of our course. Because their company supports ASQ, they're one of the corporate members, and they want them to do it. Uh, like I said, if you're working with Asian companies, there's a real benefit to getting it. But within the U.S. and most of Europe, um, I haven't seen it to be a real requirement. Other than there's people that like to get an, it, what some people think is an industry certification. But I think there's another one that Europe likes called the ISS, maybe SP, and International Society of Six Sigma Professionals, I think, that offers some type of certification. But all I know is ASQ might be the only one that doesn't re require you to take their class to also get certified. Okay. Well, very insightful, Rick. We all thank you for your time today. Right. And uh, that is all the questions I've seen come through, but we're still holding our audience here. Uh, so I will let you close. All right. Well, thank you. And again, if you have any further questions, you can write me on. My email address was at the beginning. It's not now. You will get an email at least from our company showing you the link to get a recorded copy if you wish to watch it again. You can send back to info, I-N-F-O, at smartersolutions.com or to me directly if you have a question. I am Rick dot H, R-I-C-K, period, and H, as in Haynes, my last name, at smartersolutions.com. Write to us, talk to us, answer the call, or respond to an email you get if you have any questions. We really appreciate your time. And I do hope that all of you will take a shot at Lean Six Sigma training. Do we get this last question sneaking in here? one last question. Um, a lot of organizations have courses. How do we know which certification is better uh, and which organization evaluates smarter solutions? Well, I, I mean, it's a, obvious to me that obviously we're the best and everybody else is second. <laughs> but the things to look at if you're looking for a, a training thing, because I understand travel is expensive being away from work, and sometimes you can't make the best choice isn't your optimal one. But verify that what they teach is the American Society of Quality Body of Knowledge are better. Make sure they require a certification that involves the completion of an improvement project. They should also require the use of a good statistical analysis tool as part of the class. In my view, if they're using a homegrown or just Excel, you're not getting the training you deserve for both black and green belt. I think that's about what I'd look for. The other one that you really need that you can't ever judge, though, is how experienced your instructor is. We, we see some people, and I've been told, go, go teach somebody else's material that you've never seen. Those classes don't work out well. But even Smarter Solutions, a very good provider, can't really tell you who the instructor is going to be at some times before class. We try to keep people that are 15 to 20 year specialists, but there are places that a guy gets his black belt and he's teaching the first time and they are really poor. But that's the one you can't really judge till you get there. And one thing I've always heard you say is, is if you can, try to call the company and talk to yeah, them. Yeah, call and talk to them. Try to speak to one of their instructors. The next piece about black belt and green belt training I think is specific to you. The mixture of online to instructor led, what style do you choose to or are you able to learn the best that should help you derive what type of class you go to also. Um, because there's a lot of opportunities from pure online to the R's of blended online with coaching to some that have classrooms and some online. Uh, there's the distance learning style that you watch classroom sessions being taught. You can get most anything these days. But 
just make sure you get with an experienced instructor that's been around for a while and seen a lot of students. Get a project. Should have a good analysis package with it. And but the difference between instructor led or non instructor led really was specific to you. Do we get another one pop up? Well, we have a request for contact, so we will definitely follow up okay. with that request. And as far as that goes, I think that's it. Thank you, everybody. And again, more questions, write to us. Really appreciate the chance to talk with you. Uh, but it's worth it. it. Even if you don't choose smarter solutions, it's a good thing to go get done. So thank you very much.